What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. And hello everyone, welcome once again. My name is Logan and this is Decode Your Reality. Today I'm doing one on the word death. The topic, death. The noun, death. This will be death decoded. And I'm going to show you my methods, which is probably going to take up more time than the actual presentation itself, because I want to make sure that all of you that are watching this are able to follow along and start using this methodology for yourself. This methodology works. So if you're into decoding, folks, if you're into decoding the spoken word and if you're interested in how this matrix reality works, I promise you, if you learn this methodology, you will start to see with your own eyes how this matrix works without just taking someone's word for it. So here we go. Here are my methods of decoding. So if you're new, just follow along. If you've been around and you've seen this, maybe you can skip it, but Nonetheless, it's easy to follow along. Number one, I use numerology. Many people refer to it as gematria. That is incorrect. We are using numerology. Numerology is the science of numbers. And it's when you take any word or words and you break it down to what the numbers individually represent for each letter. For instance, the letter H is related to the number five, and I'm using what's called Chaldean. I'm gonna to get to that in a minute, but notice that the word history equals the number 23. It's a 5134721, the seven letters, but it's that adds up to the number 23. Most people just use that and try to tie them together what they believe to be the matrix reality and how it works. But notice history is a 23, just like the word crown. And the reason why I'm showing you crown is because the crown is what controls this matrix reality, which means they control what is written in the history books. This is very important for you to understand. So this is the website that I use right here, dramatrinator.com. There are many different, what are called ciphers. You can click on all these and it just gets really crazy after that. My suggestion is to use just one. If you wanna go ahead and use two, these I feel are the most popular. The English ordinal is using the numbers one through 26, matching each letter A through Z. A is 1, B is 2, C is 3. Really simple. I like to use this one called Chaldean. You'll find it in the other category. And you just check off that box. This one works off of what's called phonetics, which is the vibrational frequency of letters and numbers. I feel it's far more accurate. The cipher, the breakdown, is only using the numbers 1 through 8. And of course you'll see they're all jumbled. And that's because the letters are working off of phonetics, which is the vibrational frequency of the numbers and letters. Nonetheless, these are the two primary ones that I strive to use. Once you start getting into other ones, it's easy to make connections, which waters things down. Number two, I use what's called the cards of illumination. This is the standard poker deck the standard blackjack deck the 52 cards that are in a deck of playing cards notice that the word history and crown both equal the number 23 and then we can link what card in the deck is the 23rd card which is the 10 of clubs 10 is the next number after nine which is the number after endings and completions that's numerology folks 10 is the binary number. It's the zero and the one. It's the only number of its kind. 
male and female. Zero is female, one is masculine. This is the healer and teacher card. Reason why I say that is if you go to this website right here, Star of the Magi, it's my friend Sharon's website. Got a great deal of information here. Each card, you can click on the learn more. You can find your card. Each birthday is represented by a card. So the Ten of Clubs is the healer and teacher card. It's the 23rd card in the deck. How did I find that? I've made this graph. It's a little small. Let me zoom it in here. This is the natural lineage of the cards. The heart suits is always first. It goes in order. One, one Ace is number one, all the way down to King being the 13th card. And then it starts over again back to the black suit, which is clubs. So we go down to the 23rd card, folks. It's right here, the 10 of clubs. And then we can connect the dots, which is right here. So the word history is tied to the 10 of clubs, which is the healer and teacher. Let's keep going. Another layer is the tarot. The tarot is the cousin of the cards of illumination. Cards of illumination through history tell us these came first, and then this was an offshoot of the cards of illumination. But nonetheless, these have their own specific order as well. Clubs means wands. And the 23rd card, the Ten of Clubs, becomes the 31st card in the tarot. And the reason why I'm showing the word London, because London through numerology is 31. And of course, if you know your esoteric, London is the crown. That's why the queen is there, the king is there, it's purple, it's royal. And they control history, folks. So you can see how these are tie-ins and how they play a role in deciding how this matrix will express itself. The natural lineage of those cards are right here. I have the zero all the way down to card number 77. Now some of you say, well, wait a minute, there's 78 cards. You can observe them that way. I just know that the fool card, the zero card, does not have a number 22 at its top. It only has the zero which makes the Ace of Wands the 22nd card. Now this may again, may go against your grain, but I think you'll find if you use this lineage, folks, you'll find massive accuracy and significance. So again, the 31st card is the 10 of Wands, the 10 of Clubs. Let's keep going. Then we get into alchemy. This is science now, folks. So we get into the elements of the periodic table. Maybe this is the first time you've seen this since high school, since you've studied the periodic table. But nonetheless, folks, we are made up of these elements. The spoken word can be broken down in numbers and numbers can be measured in the laboratory. And that's where the elements of the periodic table come into play. This right here, this is the periodic table by the Royal Society of Chemistry. Each one of these have protons, which are the numbers that they're given. And then of course they have atomic weights, which are right here, and they have origins of their name. They have little clues, all these little things in parentheses, you can decode these. The 29th element, copper, okay, you can, you can find things in the history, you can start to really look at these kinds of things. But nonetheless, these have great significance. And it tries to hide from you folks. It really does. But nonetheless, we're gonna move on to the next one, which is numberempire.com, numberempire.com. It'll give you the numbering aspects. Then you get into prime numbers. Then you get into Fibonacci numbers. The number 23 is the ninth prime number. Remember, we're talking about crown in history. We are going to be talking about death, but I'm trying to show you the foundation of this methodology so you can follow along, so you can understand it. 23 is the ninth prime number. Nine means endings and completions. History means endings and completions. Nine is a wi the wisest number there is. 
because it's the culmination of this number zero through eight. So crown 23, the ninth prime number, wise, history. So you see how all these fall into place. So let's get started now. I only have two slides, folks. That was the brunt of the presentation. But here's where it all comes into play and how it all ties together. The word death has a total numerology of 19. Individually, these letters and words are the 45145. It's this five-letter word. Follow the breadcrumb trail, folks. It's really simple when you do that. The number 19 we, is 1-9. So when we say 1-9 through numerology, it becomes a 33. It's measured out as a 33. And that's linked to the word ascension. If you know anything about the esoteric, when we supposedly die, we ascend. Or at least that's the goal. We don't want to descend. We want to ascend, which means go up. The physical body returns to the ground. The spirit ascends. And of course, if you know anything about esoteric, the 33 levels of Freemasonry, there's the reason why it stops at 33. Maybe it goes higher than that. But the 33 are the known ones. Jesus was killed at the age of 33. And there are 33 not spinal aspects to a spinal cord 33 spinal cord and what's really interesting folks is the elements of the periodic table 33rd element is arsenic its atomic weight is, is 74.922 it's 74 what's crazy about this folks the tie-ins is that Jesus was crucified at the age of 33 and his name in numerology through the English cipher equals 74 so you can see Jesus is right there in arsenic arsenic is poisonous folks if you're gonna kill somebody off you're gonna maybe give him a dose of arsenic and how fitting that the Christ was crucified at the age of 33 and his name is 74 but what throws a big wrench in all of this is his counterpart is Lucifer, which many believe to be the devil. His name also equals the number 74. So now we have a little bit of controversy going on here. Are we talking about the same entity? That leaves it up to you as the observer. Let's keep going. The word spirit equals 19 which matches that of death i'm showing that because remember the 33rd card in the deck is the seven of diamonds and that card right there when you read about it in my friend's website the star of the magi it'll say it's the spirit meets matter card spirit meets matter matter would be the physical body Spirit would be the soul or the spirit. Spirit is 19. Matching that of death. Does this indicate that when we die, we turn back into the spirit? Leaving behind the matter. The 33rd card being the seven of diamonds, its counterpart in the tarot is the seven of pentacles. This card right here, when you go study it, one of the key words is harvest. Notice the symbology. Here, let me blow it up here. This is a guy, he's overlooking all of what he's raked up. He's kind of pulled everything in a pile. He's overlooking everything. This is kind of observing what you have and what you've made. Seven, of course, is the Sabbath day. So it would be a day of rest and reflection. You're resting and reflecting upon what you've gathered. Harvest. And that's exactly what would happen when you leave the matter, the physical body. You would harvest the spirit and go back to where you belong or back to source energy. Seven, of course, means completion. See how all that works. 
And that leads me to the second slide, folks. This is it. This is the presentation on death. I'm trying to keep it simple. The big standout is spirit meets matter. Spirit is 19. Matter is 20. The 19th card in the tarot is the sun card. And the 20th card is the judgment card. And do we not get judged in our physical bodies? Are we not here to experience life? And then through our actions, of course, this is all based upon what we've been programmed, folks. Through whatever means you've been programmed, school, theology, what your parents taught you, what you learned from a mentor, a guru. We are here to experience life through the physical avatar that we all carry. But we have a spirit inside that avatar, folks. And this is where we get judged. And then we return back to our spirit, which could be the eye in the sky, the sun. The sun and moon could be the two eyes that observe this matrix reality and these are portals and it's where we will go back to I mean everybody says oh most people I know I'm a light worker I'm a light worker I'm a light worker okay cool maybe that's what you are because Sun means light and if you're gonna go back to source when you die death is 19 well there's the 19th card when you die do you go back to light Do you go back to source source energy and leave behind the physical body that you get judged through. What's really interesting on another layer, folks, the reason why I've included, you've seen this maybe since I haven't even shown it yet, but why I have a picture of Neo from The Matrix. There's a very good reason why Keanu Reeves was chosen for this role, Destiny. Go see my video on de the decoding of John Wick. It'll tell you exactly why Keanu Charles Reeves was chosen for this role. But this is the reason why, because the element neodymium, neo, neo, is the 60th element. And why I have a picture of the pyramid back here, because the Great Pyramid of Giza, folks, it's there for a very specific reason. The latitude longitude, X marks the spot. It's at 29 degrees north and 31 degrees east. And when you add up 29 plus 31, you'll come to the number 60. I don't care what kind of calculator you use, 29 plus 31 will equal the number 60. And perhaps this is what it means. I mean, a lot of people say this Great Pyramid of Giza was a burial, a ceremonial burial for the pharaohs to go back to spirit to go back to source and if you know anything about the shape of this the triangle the point the capstone notice that the speed of light is a direct match for the latitude of the great pyramid of giza i mean it's right there 299792 I mean, you say, well, what about the 458? Well, come on, use your logic and common sense, folks. There it is. There it is, a direct match. And, and latitude means going up. It means going up. And the sun is above us. So use your common sense and what Hollywood's telling you, the chosen one coming, and his name's Neo? Neodymium, by the way, is used to make magnets. This is magnetic. And the sun is a part of dielectricity, electricity, and magnetism. Physics. So then you can bring true science into this and understand, folks, that death is just a doorway to another dimension. It's not to be feared because we carry on. And of course, you know, if you believe in judgment, well, then do good deeds in this world and you'll have nothing to worry about. That's what we're supposed to be doing anyway, is service to others in this world so we have good karma. And then you don't have to worry about being judged. Throw it out the window. The whole 
Sheol and hell and burning fire, that will be a moot point. It'll be obsolete because your judgment will be based upon your actions. And of course, if you're service to others and you live from your heart, then you got nothing to worry about. But look at what this tells us right here, folks. Loud and clear. We are light beings, human, H-U-E, hue, the light hue. We are angels of light. And we go back to source through death, which is just a doorway to another dimension. And we get harvested. I mean, it's clear as day. So what is it that you saw during this presentation? What did you see? Are you seeing the bigger picture? Do you see how this methodology works, folks? I mean, these are fixated in nature. So are these. So is numerology. You just got to understand the moving parts of how it all works. Science. These are real elements that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. And these are characters, fiction or not, they're non-fiction because of these real elements in our lives. They tell a story. And life is just a story. So that's all I got for today. My name is Logan. This is Decoder Reality. Thank you so very much for watching.